Oh, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top and beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Somehow, we have stumbled into Thursday. I don't know what the hell day it is, June 10th, 11th, 12th, somewhere in there I lose time here in Bugs in a Jar Farm. We're going to call this Bugs in a Jar Farm, the no mask allowed retreat outside of Ithaca, New York, where I am getting ready to, uh, good Lord, we're getting this planet-eating machine from hell the brush hog to attack bugs in a jar farm and my she was left to me by the end of this day but before I head out for a day of planet eating I, I know several of you have sent me a, I'm a little unclear <coughs> I guess why uh, several of my alert listeners have picked this title for Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles this is from this this one is from fizz.org scientists lament humpty dumpty effect on world's spectacular rare wildlife huh we're going to talk about the humpty dumpty effect on collapse chronicles who was humpty dumpty humpty dumpty was that egg who fell off a wall how does that go? Anyway, we all remember that. Uh, we all vaguely remember Humpty Dumpty who could not be put back together again. So this is the Humpty Dumpty effect. Take it away. Fizz.org <clears throat> Some of the world's largest, most spectacular, and unheralded, unheralded mammals are silently slipping away. Species like the Tibetan wild yaks and Patagonia's Humal, Bhutan's Takin, and Vietnam's Saola. Even Africa's three species of zebras and wildebeest have suffered massive reductions over the last several decades. The reasons for these losses are more than disease and habitat fragmentation, deforestation, or wildlife trade, according to researchers. Ultimately, the cause is rampant human population growth. Hmm. And unless human behavior changes in unprecedented ways, these scientists warn that future communities of these mammals will never resemble those of the recent past or even today. The findings are based on a new study titled Disassembled Food Webs and Messy Projections, Modern Ungulate Communities in the Face of Unabating Human Population Growth which was published June 9th in Frontiers in Ecology and Evolution. Joel Berger, lead author of the study and a professor at Colorado State University, said that the time for action is now. Mm-hmm. The time for action is now. And that touting past conservation achievements does little to better humanity's future. Quote, we all must realize we are members of a broad, beautiful, and living planet, and we must find ways to subsist in this together or suffer more severe consequences than what we already see, close quote, said Berger, who is a senior scientist at the Wildlife Conservation Society, quote, for many assemblages of animals, we are nearing a moment in time when, like Humpty Dumpty, we will not be able to put things back together again. Yes, 
Berger is also the Barbara Cox Anthony University Chair of Wildlife Conservation. Sounds like he knows what he means when talking about uh, our fellow earthlings going humpty dumpty effect on us. Okay, we're going to analyze some ecological human disruptors. <clears throat> In the new study, the research team, which also included Alejandro Vila, the director of science for WCS's Patagonia program, Cristobal Brisenko, a professor and veterinarian at University of Chile, and Joanna Lambert, a professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder, the scientists analyzed direct and indirect disruptions that lead to the changing roles of mammals in global ecosystems and noted how the nature of ecological interactions has changed and will do so on an even larger scale in coming decades. More specifically, they looked at what has transpired with the Humul in Patagonia, the Taquin in Bhutan, the wild horses in deserts, wolves and coyotes in North America, and the inevitability of change in big ecosystems as large carnivores are extirpated. Scientists said this is happening as the human population increases its footprint on land. <clears throat> All right, this is study co-author Shi Wang Wangchuk, conservation biologist and president of the Bhutan Foundation. Quote, <coughs> even in the remote reaches of the Himalayas, stray and feral dogs, yes, stray and feral dogs <clears throat> result, a, a direct result of human intrusions wreak havoc on wild and domestic species of high economic value and cultural importance. Are you listening to that, Sancho? Chippies are of high cultural importance. Humans only recently colonized parts of the Himalayas, areas where ice has receded due to warming temperatures. Yet, the authors also point to human population change at a global scale. In 1830, when Vice Admiral Robert Fitzroy captained his ship, the Beagle, through the Magellan Straits of South America, fewer than 1.2 billion people inhabited Earth. By Earth Day in 1970, there were more than three and a half billion of us, and today, only 50 years later, the world's population approaches 8 billion. As we said many times before, livestock and humans now constitute a staggering 97% of our planet's mammal biomass, as food webs are already irretrievably altered by humans. The research team said worldwide food webs have become irretrievably altered by humans with little hope to reconstitute even recent past conditions or put back the ecological functions once created by native species. Feral pigs, for instance, exist today on every continent except Antarctica and in 70% of the the states in the United States don't know if we have feral hogs up here in upstate New York. If we don't, we will. These animals, feral hogs, disrupt fish, reptiles, birds, and other small mammals, 
plants and soils. In addition, climate change warms the oceans, which in turn foments marine algae blooms, reducing fishery catches. With less demand for fish, a, co a consequent uptick in wildlife poaching on land occurs. <clears throat> the scientists also documented how an appetite for fashion like Kashmir increases imports to the West from Mongolia, India, and China, resulting in economic incentives for desert pastoralists to produce more domestic goats in Central Asia. These goats, in turn, compete for food with native species and are in danger due to increasing numbers of dogs in these areas. The dogs, the dogs, are not only direct predators, but also carry diseases which jeopardizes endangered species like snow leopards, kayang, and gazelles. And there you go. So we are supposed to use our ecological grief to implement action. All right, this is how to put your grief into action. Berger and the study authors suggest that despite these grim findings, all is not yet lost. There we go. It is time to bring in the hopium and make some lemonade out of these lemons. The world has remarkable protected areas, including Serengeti and Kruger National Park in Africa, Yellowstone and Wrangell, St. Elias National Park and Preserve in North America, Madidi National Park in Bolivia, the Patagonia ice fields of Chile, Chang Tang Nature Reserve in China, and Northeast Greenland National Park, the world's largest national park. And although food webs with large mammals will be different from those of the past and operate differently today, there are options to shape the future. This is co-author Lambert, quote, it is not too late. We have not gone humpty dumpty on this planet yet, according to Ms. Lambert. It is not too late, and we simply do not have the luxury of time to mourn what we have lost. We need to use our ecological grief to implement action in honor the exceptional biodiversity that remains. This can be done by protecting large tracts of the planet's wild places, close quote. Apparently, Ms. Lambert uh, is not a reader of mongabay.com uh, where every Friday uh, Rhett Butler reports over and over and over again how these protected areas are an absolute joke. These protected areas are under just, just a, a, they're a declaration of war. The, the very notion of a protected area on this planet uh, is a joke. Uh, this woman knows damn well uh, the, the big lie of protected areas, e even the ones where the trees are left standing, are what they're calling more and more biological deserts as every one of our fellow earthlings uh, is going into the stew pot. Uh, anyway, I need to bring today's Chronicle of the Collapse to a close because I have a bush hog with my name on it at the tool rental place and we have to go uh, protect the biodiversity of bugs in a jar farm by uh, bush hogging it and uh, figuring out what the vision is so anybody who wants to come join the vision here at bugs in a jar farm 
in Ithaca, New York, send me a, an email to collapsechronicles at gmail.com and we can find a place for you as long as you have your own tent and understand that bugs in a jar farm is a no mask allowed zone. <clears throat> Come see us. All right, little dog, are you ready to go get the bush hog? You're not going to join the bush hogging adventure. You're going to stay here on this couch all day today. We don't need to run over you with a bush hog. Anyway, come see us. Bye, guys. Go get that chippy like that.